Um, meanwhile, while the president was not uh, was busy not worrying about these fiscal and debt issues this week, he was busy at the UN. Uh, uh, trying but not really succeeding in meeting the president of Iran, among other things. Right. That, so there was a lot of buildup heading into the UN General Assembly and a lot of questions of will they or won't they meet uh, the President Obama and President Rouhani, will they shake hands, will they nod to each other, mm -hmm. will they exchange a word? And uh, interestingly, in the end, Obama was willing to do that, Rouhani was not. And so uh, the, the United States expressed a willingness to have a meeting on the margins, and the Irani Iranians said, we can't do that. We have to answer to the hardliners back home, we're not ready to do that. You know, so he was rebuffed. Right, and that, that reveals an interesting thing, which is the truth is that for years now, across both Republican and Democratic administrations, the U.S. has actually been willing to meet with the Iranians, um, and sometimes eager to have that conversation, and it's been the Iranian side that can't pull it off, that the, the idea of even shaking the hands of an American president uh, is so repulsive to so many people back home that you can't do it. I, there's an interesting analysis that says that's actually a good sign because because Rouhani is serious about wanting to have some kind of rapprochement. He didn't want to let a symbolic thing like I shook hands with the president, you know, sort of rile up all the hardliners back home to the point where he couldn't proceed on the more substantive things, which involved, for example, having the Secretary of State John Kerry talk to the Iranian Foreign Minister about their nuclear program, which which is happening. But do you think the White House made a mistake by calling so much attention to the potential he handshake? Well, I mean, you, you might have a thought on this. To be honest, they weren't trying to draw as much attention to it as we were all trying <laughs> to shine upon it. So I think you have to blame us, not uh, the White House on that that's one. That's always the media. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Right. Um, but, you know, but clearly the White House wanted it to happen, would have been happy had it occurred. It would have been seen as sort of a signal moment and a change of tone. Right. And there certainly was some back and forth, and, and uh, there was the possibility that it could happen. And uh, in the end, Obama went to this lunch, President Rouhani did not, and, uh, and they just had to back off. But then, interestingly, President Rouhani the next day sat down with some American media folks and gave an interview, and, uh, and, and, but came out and basically acknowledged the Holocaust, which was an interesting development, yeah. which some people noted should not be considered a huge progress, yeah. but it's still interesting. And even that, this this stir a lot of controversy right. in Iran. Yeah, absolutely. But I mean, I think what he is doing is he is sort of bursting some of these bubbles um, mm -hmm. that have gotten in the way. And, you know, that was the Holocaust, the Ahmadinejad denial right. of the Holocaust was one. Um, the the uh, refusal to talk about their nuclear program until everybody agreed they would roll back sanctions, well, that seems to have been dropped. I think there's going to be diplomacy here, and I think it's potentially meaningful diplomacy. But how hard it is to get it started is a sign of how difficult you know this this whole road is going to be, um, and I suspect the Israelis are watching with some nervousness now, particularly the prime minister.